trying to get an airstrike over on that opposite side. Hi everyone, Talon from the Airsoft Headquarters here and welcome back to the channel. If I seem a little more tired and exhausted, there's a good reason for that. What I'm going to talk about has been a project that I've had with a customer gun specifically, um, but this is also going to be just an overview of the gate products, kind of as an umbrella overview so you guys are aware of what's happening and I want to break down what I did and kind of the complications that arose from that um because that this has taken me a long long time this has been several hours of installation firmware updates trying to get things electronically to communicate that weren't communicating but then i had to wait for a firmware update because oh it was just not fun it was not fun but I want to break that down for you guys so you are aware as to what is happening but kind of the keystone item of the gate video that i have here is going to be the gate status here Ooh. so this is a somewhat newer product to the gate lineup like somewhat newer um so there's not a whole lot of videos out and of the channels that have made the status specific videos i think are sponsored players or advocate players for businesses because it sounded like they were running off of a script and while i have my talking bulletin points behind this cleverly placed computer screen um it's definitely not scripted so i'm not sponsored i do utilize these gate products within my own equipment such as the mp5 back here i have a gate aster inside there um the MCX has a Gate Titan front wired. I have a old Gate Titan that I'm going to further break down because this one shit the bed on me. And we do regularly suggest the Gate Pico uh, MOSFET system for anyone that's looking for a, just a basic MOSFET system to run LiPo batteries. The Picos are really, really great for that. So we're advocates for Gate products. And so we have some of the accessories to make this work. Um, so kind of a little background for you guys. I am one of the technicians here at the Airsoft headquarters. Um, I've been playing here for, I've been playing Airsoft for about nine, 10 years now. Um, and I have installed several gate systems, not only into my own guns, but also into other customers' guns. And I've been able to watch um, the progression of gate products uh, since they've been released. And the kind of feedback that uh, the Airsoft community as a whole has responded to it. So kind of starting off, Gate is a MOSFET brand for airsoft electronic guns that is based over in Europe. They are a European company. And what they do is their big ticket items, the uh, product that all of the airsofters are talking about are the Gate Titan or Gate Asters. So the point of the Gate Titan and Gate Aster is to replace the old school trigger contacts and mix a um a optical sensitive uh light sensitive system so you no longer have traditional contacts in here wherever you pull the trigger uh it's going to hit a light diode and that uh, recognizes within the system here when the trigger is being pulled so the advantage to this for the airsoft community is that you have less overall wear and tear on internal parts of components because there's no arcing of trigger contacts. Um, and with the Gate Titan Gate Aster, um, the Titan specifically has multiple boards here. So it has a top board with prongs that will connect to the bottom board here. And it kind of sits around the trigger as it uh, sits inside of the gearbox shell. Um, conveniently enough, this is a Gate or a KWA T10 gearbox. So they are compatible with the Gate Titan but not the Gate Asters. A little quick note about that. Um, the advantages to the Gate Titan and Gate Aster within a traditional trigger contact system is you get more sensitivity, uh, less wear down of parts. With those motherboards, you actually get significantly more inputted information as far as ambient temperature, how many total shots has been fired on the system, either dry fired or actively shot. Actually, I take that back because it can't distinguish between a dry fire and not. 
so it collects the both of dry fire and actively shooting. It, it can tell you like the ohms of voltage that is pulled from the battery within certain temperature. It, you can get really in depth with all the information that the Gate Titan and Gate Aster can give to you. So um, a lot of players like it for that reason. But there's a lot of misconception as far as this these systems go because the connotation with these systems is you drop it into a gun and it makes it perform flawlessly. And that's not the case, and that's never been the case for a very, very long time. The There are advantages to this, such as all of that uh, minor information that it can register to you as the player, but it's really just one piece. It's like um, it's like when you take an F1 car and, no, that's not a, so the misconception is you take a, I guess just a stock Volkswagen Beetle and you drop a, just a regular race engine into it and it's supposed to make it much, much faster. It's supposed to make it compatible with an F1 car. And that's just not the case. There are so many other parts and components that need to be integrated into an engine system in order to make it go fast, go fast reliably and go fast for a long period of time, right? Just because you take a regular gearbox here and just because you drop the gate titan inside of there doesn't mean it's going to be a really really high performing build there's a lot of other parts components that need to be put inside there but i digress um so the gate titan gate aster really really great systems there's a couple of other systems such as the usb link and the blue link that i have uh here so if you're utilizing the gate control station via a computer system, that will allow you to program and evaluate the different uh, readings that you can receive from the gate Titan. So we'll just take this for an example. Let's say I've got my gate control station pulled up here. I plug this bad boy in. So it's gonna register that I plugged it in. I'm getting a cool little blinky blue light that the computer has recognized, the USB link, and everything from gate for a, like an actual motherboard system has this individual uh, pin number. So everything is serialized and can go directly back to gate if there's some type of issue as far as warranty. So with this, you're not supposed to do this, but I'm going to anyway, because this is a fried board, but there's a blinky red light. I don't, you guys can see that. Um, that registers via the computer screen here that the Titan has been plugged in. So we can look at things such as the uh, different firmware additions. You have the basic, ad the basic, advanced, and expert, I think. So depending on what firmware edition you get, you can always get the basic and then purchase uh, whatever different firmware you want. So you can go with the basic and then upgrade to the expert if you wanted to. Um, you don't need to buy the basic and then go, oh, I wanna upgrade to the advanced system. And that's no longer a whole additional purchase. You can just spend the $15 because this, ooh, the Gate Titan I think is 80 or $90. To spend another $90 just to give you more information via this, not really worth it, in my opinion. Then we have, it'll register the individual serial number, so on and so forth. So from here, I can go to say, general information. So I can look at things such as battery protection, I can set the different type of voltages, I can set different type of selectors. Uh, you know, we have safe semi full auto, I can set that to safe uh, burst binary, safe semi burst, safe semi semi, so on and so forth. Um, we can select the different type of gear ratio so that um, the system itself can recognize at as far as timing and all the other digital stuff that they have programmed in there uh, when they need to stop it. Active braking, these are great for active braking. If you're gonna do like a very high speed build like a DSG, you need to get yourself a gate Titan so that you can then click and then make it to where it's a, it's a manual or oh, I meant gear ratio. Um, gear ratio for DSGs, and then you need the active braking to like really stop that system. Uh, da, 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 da. And then we can also set the sensitivity of the trigger. We can change the selectors like I was telling you about. We can even program 
uh, the different capacities of magazines, how many magazines you're running, if you wanna incorporate a reload time sequence. So let's say you, you shoot 30, or so you have a regular 120 round mid capacity magazine. So you have a regular 150 round EPM magazine. Let's say you wanna run a mag capacity of 30, and then you have a reload timing sequence of one to 10 seconds, I think. So if you slide this into your gun, you shoot 30 BBs, it's going to manually pause the entire system that one to five seconds that you have programmed before you're able to actually get shots from the system. So it incorporates uh, that more realistic type of aspect to it. And then what was that? Low ammo remaining, low ammo warning. Ooh, that's really cool. So if you wanna program the 150 rounds, you can get, you can get a, um, a little beep sequence if you are at the remaining 20 or 10 rounds. You get different alerts that you can program. Um, so this is all the information and I have the advanced on this one. So the basic would give you, I think the five or six here, and then the advanced will give you a couple more information bolts and then the expert gives you all of them. So really, really in depth. So we got BB counter, trigger response, rate of fire, uh, Titan temperature, which is 18 degrees Celsius, voltage, uh, the current on semi-automatic, the current on full auto, and the peak current. So that'll tell you as far as different resistances or any type of flaws in the wiring system, so on and so forth. You have a lot of things going on. Um, and because everything's so advanced, it'll also register when there are any type of issues with the gearbox. If it registers that there's too much resistance or if there's a very quick cutoff of no resistance, then it'll register that there's an issue somewhere and then it'll give you a series of beeps. And then you can plug it all in and you can see, mm, what, are, what are the issues? So with this system specifically, um, it's fried. I took it down to Tennessee for an event in a, in a proper hard case, like a real, real hard case. Like this guy here. And it was protected in a car. It wasn't like on a trailer or on the roof of the car. It was like properly protected. Went down to Tennessee, opened it up, plugged a battery into it and went ah, 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 ah. And it says that the trigger is being pulled when I put a battery in, which it doesn't do that. So even if I cleared the diagnostic page here, which you can do that, um, it still didn't fix or resolve the issue. So right now this system is just fucked and I don't know what to do about it. But it's also not the first Titan that's messed up. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as a demonstration for the customers that are coming in. I'm out about 90 bucks on that guy that I paid for, so whatever. Whatever, says I. So I personally am not a huge fan of the Titan series. I think that's just a little too much money, a little too rich for my blood, but <laughs> but I also spent a couple hundred bucks on trying to build a Gucci Glock that didn't work. So that's what we have as far as the Titans and the Asters utilizing the USB link. The blue link allows for a Bluetooth connectivity while the Titan or while a battery is plugged into a gun, like I have here. So we have, this is the connector from the gate Titan that is installed in this KWA TK45. This block right here, this motherboard is the blue link. So when the battery is plugged in, it's be blinking there. So it's actively um, outputting information, which could be to a phone. In this case, it is hooked up via Bluetooth to the gate status here. So from here, I could go onto my phone and I can go to the gate control station app, which was only compatible with the Android series of phones originally. Now it's compatible with iOS and Apple. So now I can get everything as far as firmware updated and I can look at all the information through my phone here. Some of those controls as far as programming are going to be limited through the phone app. So it'll be more advantageous to go through the uh, um, your laptop or your computer's 
gate control station app and have more programmability options that way. So that's my two cents. Ultimately utilize the USB link for programming and looking at the different information presented to you. But if you want the gate status to work and be compatible with the gate Titan series, you need to use the gate blue link to take the information and put it onto here, which has been so, so frustrating. So if I need to update the USB link, I need to have it Bluetooth synced up to my phone in order to update the firmware through my phone. I can then also update the firmware to the gate Titan if I so choose, or I could plug it into the laptop and update it that way. Great, awesome. The gate status needs to be updated through the phone. So I need to Bluetooth sync that I need to disconnect the blue link so I can hook the status up and update the firmware. So at the first point of getting everything together and communicating properly, or uh, just getting everything Bluetooth synced to my phone, all the firmware was updated. The issue was that for the phone, for whatever reason, the gate status firmware update wasn't the most recent. It was still technically an old version even though it was the most updated version that I could get on my phone. So the firmware was still not compatible and was not registering information to the blue link and thus wasn't compatible with the Titan and blue link with the most recent firmware update. So without knowing what version I needed to look for, I just set this off to the side for a couple of days, came back, got a notification that there was a firmware update for the status. Great. Perfect, awesome. I update it, and then it's starting to communicate back and forth here. But for some reason, the Titan was not registering the sector gear. Not exactly sure what was going on with that. So I had to pull everything back apart, make sure all the sensors were clean, just take a very, very fine brush and just sponge all of the grease out to make sure everything's completely clear. I even took a file and I was polishing the sector gear to where it's a, it's, it was nice and clear for the optical sensors to register where the sector is turning over, put it all back together, cleared the diagnostic page. Um, and that made the Titan work. But at that point, in order to register and clear everything out, I had incidentally updated the firmware of this again. So then these guys then jumped ahead another firmware version, which meant that this was no longer communicating with this, which means I need to wait a couple more days to check that the firmware was available for this to download and install to make sure everything was working properly. So that was probably like a little over a week of just having to wait and sit on my ass for the firmware updates to become available through my Apple phone. So that was a huge, huge pain in the ass. But now I'm at a point where everything is properly communicating, everything is together, and I have not logged into my gate control station app because I don't want there to be another firmware update that fucking screws everything up. So if you do want to go with this system, be aware that if you do go into the gate control station app, there may, or may be a firm, firmware update that may discombobulate what is going on here. Now, if that happens over the weekend, then you may just not be able to run the gate status system properly, which I rambled very, very long time. So let's talk about what the gate control or what the gate status is. So obviously, it's a very, very large block that sits on the side of your rail system. It's designed to give you a real time uh, information hub on the side of your gun. So you as the player can know exactly how many shots are in your magazine. Um, the shot counter, as far as you can start from zero and count upwards how many shots you've taken. It will give you how many shots are left on the battery. Um, it'll give you an estimate on that. It'll tell you the ambient temperature. It doubles as a gyroscope, so it'll tell you if your barrel is level or not. It has a step counter on there, a calorie burning counter. There's a lot of cool systems built into this. So it's made of a, um, a very hard metal exterior shell. 
and it's made of a high, uh, a high resistance impact glass on the very back here. It's a very, very low pixel um, LED uh, scale. In fact, I think you guys are seeing it refresh just a little bit, so that's why it looks a little hazy. But through the gate app system, which again, you program through here via the blue link, you can communicate your capacity of magazines, which this one, the TK45, is going to have 120 round mid caps. So you need to put that into the gate Titan information, and then you can also tell it how many magazines you plan on carrying. So it'll also keep count of when you change magazines, it'll tell you how many magazines you have left on your plate carrier. There's a couple of issues with this. One, it recognizes the turnover of the gearbox. It doesn't recognize the difference between when you're dry firing or when you're actually sending BBs down range. So even if you're dry firing off from the side to make sure that your battery is plugged in properly, it's still going to count it as a shot. So it goes with the magazine not plugged in. So it's still starting to count down, which is not what we want. So in order to fix this, if we want to insert a fresh magazine, we have to hit, there's two buttons on the front face here. I should actually probably put the batteries away. So on the front face here, there are two large uh, buttons here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press both of those, which sends us to this uh, quick access menu. So we can then hit bolt catch reset. That pretty much just means we're inserting a fresh new magazine. Hit that, and now we're back to 120. But if we have the magazine uh, capacity, or not magazine capacity, but the number of magazines that we have left, it'll take away a number from there. So, ba -ba -ba -ba. well, this is not in the correct format, but we can see T is, I think, how many shots I've taken with this battery plugged in. I don't know what that 30 means. 36 calories burnt, 120 rounds in the magazine. What we can do is, Quick press both of those buttons. We can reset the remaining number of magazines. We can change the magazine capacity, the number of magazines. We can reset the distance that we have traveled. And then we can go to the main menu. Double press. Dashboards is what information is presented to you on the screen. So press that. Dashboard one, let's do dashboard two. And then we have the different options as far as what we can have shown. So main widget is going to be the large, the largest of information that is presented to you. And then we have uh, TL, top left information, TR, top right, BL, bottom left, BR, bottom right. So if we go back to the main menu, we have dashboard one, dashboard two, dashboard three, dashboard four. We're gonna go back to back, hit cancel. So this is screen number one. Wish I had a pen on me. I don't have a pen on me. So we're gonna use a knife. So widget one, top right, or top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And then as we go through, we just press either the topmost or bottommost button, and that'll get us through the individual screens. Conveniently, we have four different screens. So we have four different dashboards that we can have pre-programmed uh, with different information presented to us. So dashboard one gives us the most amount of information. Dashboard two gives us three bullets of information. Dashboard four, gives us again three dashboards of information and dashboard four gives us one piece of information. So all of these conveniently are pretty similar as far as the information presented, but we can go into those sub dashboard information menu and have different layouts that we would want. So there's some cool, cool customization as far as that. And again, oh, so what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna press and hold the back two buttons to try to turn off. 
you have to do a quick press, go all the way down to shut down, double button press, hit yes in order to shut down. And then to turn on, you're gonna press and hold the back two buttons. It's gonna turn on, it's gotta sync. I think it's going to sync with this. I hope it does. You beeped. Are you gonna give me the information? There we go. Woo. Makes me so nervous. I spend so much time on this. So there we have kind of the very brief overview. Some issues with this. You have to manually reset the magazine or you have to reset the number of BBs in the magazine. It doesn't automatically do it. There is no type of instruction manual on how to do programming or different setups with this system. Um, in fact, if you go to the gate website, the actual menu or manual for this is very well hidden. I'm gonna to try to put the link down in the description below so you guys are able to follow along, do whatever you want. But otherwise, there are QR codes all over. There's this, in the box, this quick start guide with QR codes just all over inside here. This is not the manual. I gotta warn you, this is just a legal pad that gives you all of the legal information like, hey, make sure you read the manual and you know how to use and operate this system and make sure you register it for warranty, blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't give you the manual. So somewhere, one of the QR codes on here, I had to scan and it was like five QR codes deep before I was able to like find the, the proper QR code to scan for the actual menu, manual. And the manual is so just blanket information, it doesn't give you any information as far as how to customize and how to do whatever you want with this. So it's very, 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 very confusing. So I don't like it for that either. The other thing with this system, even though it's super rugged, it's watertight, it's water, uh, water resistant, impact resistant, um, there's even a video of the gate guys dropping it into a puddle and then running it over with a Humvee uh, to show you that it is water and impact resistant at the same time. But the biggest thing is that the price point is so outrageous. This is $325 if you want the status with the blue link that you need to get these two systems to communicate with the Gate Titan or Aster that you have installed. And these will only communicate with the Aster or Titan. So $325 plus the 90 or whatever for this, very expensive. Very, very, very outlandishly expensive. So in my personal opinion, I don't think that this system is really worth the money. Um, really for the effect, some of the um, things that this system does, the gate status, it's a magazine capacity notifier. Well, if you just know what the capacity of your magazines are and you use this system often enough in order to know what the capacity of the magazines are, or even if you have some type of system that allows you to look at the capacity of magazines, like I conveniently have a hill hole drilled into the side of this. So if I'm like super laying down fire, I can just twist the gun to the side, look to my magazine capacity is left in the magazine and then go back if I know that I have enough BBs or not. Or I can just simply yes. If I know about what 120 BBs are, then I can just pull and insert a fresh one. It's really, really simple. If I wanna utilize it for a step counter, well, there's apps built into that for your phone. So you can just have that in one of your pouches or one of your pockets and it'll count your steps for you and tell you how many calories you're burning while out on the field. Um, notifying you how many shots you have left roughly on the charge of battery that you have plugged in, that's really neat. But the Titan does have a battery shutoff system. So you can put a battery protector uh, limiter on the Titan itself that you don't need the blue link or the status in order to program. So then you'll get a couple of beeps from the motor here to let you know, hey, your battery is running low. Maybe you need to swap it out. And that's how you swap your battery out. So there's already systems that are kind of 
in and around the Titan or just basic uh, weapon knowledge that already kind of makes this system not super useful. Is it really cool? Oh yeah, it's super awesome. Um, in fact, we have a couple minutes of us shooting and testing it out and I think it's really cool, but really for the, the money, if you're looking to save some cash, maybe don't pick this up. They're not gonna be utilizing a system like this just for like weekend play. This would be something more for like a competitive system. I think personally, if they were to do something like this, maybe not this exact system, but something similar where it's still a heads up screen and it counts up or down the magazine capacity, it doesn't need to tell you steps or voltage or battery life or temperature or anything like that. I think that that'd be a really great system to incorporate for LMG guns. So the guys that run the super heavy 249s, M60s, stuff like that, that have the big hopper chamber system of BBs, right? If you n dump 2000 rounds-ish and you have this heads up display as far as 2000 and starts counting down as you're firing, that would be a really cool incorporation of a system that would benefit that build specifically. But for this, on a regular rifle, an M4 or submachine gun like this, I personally don't see the benefit. Um, now, this is one of the first things from Gate that is part of the Gate ecosystem lineup. So Gate's already going to uh, plan on incorporating and building uh, a branch of other uh, Gate accessories that would work in tandem with the Titans or the Asters, utilizing that Blue Link system. Um, so I think that this was certainly a really, really good system. And I think a lot of people do benefit from it if they see the value of it. I personally don't think that it, would, it was a good system to start off with for the first product within the gate ecosystem. I think going with a couple of those smaller price, those more um, kind of universally known systems that are just like, hey, for 100 50 bucks, you can get a smaller screen or a heads up display or something here that just tells you your magazine capacity or tells you the voltage or something like that. And then later on down the road, release this that incorporates more information on a heads up display. I think it's weird that they, I would hope, I would hope that this is not the cheapest product on their accessory lineup. I would hope that this would be the most expensive, and then they would work their way down in price. But ultimately, I don't know. I do know that Gate recently released um, their CNC piston head and cylinder head. So they are branching out and they're incorporating a couple of other gun specific accessories that are made in house. So they're making a bunch of accessories, not necessarily incorporating their Gate electronic system, but I would like to see more of those systems integrated, if you know what I mean. Um, I personally think it'd be really cool to have like a 45 heads up display. Um, that's significantly harder to do and to work with and to make sure that it's not going to shatter and break when someone drops their gun on the side here. This, I know, is not going to break and shatter no matter how much you drop it. Not that I am going to drop it because this is a customer's gun, um, but he did give me permission to use it for a video. Um, if I remember correctly, he did say I could shoot it, but I said I wasn't going to shoot it because um, it's still his system and I don't want to do that. So I'm really thankful for him for being able to not only trust me with a build like this, um, it wasn't my most daunting of build, but it was super, exhausting and frustrating trying to deal with those electronic firmwares um, and I really appreciate him giving me the opportunity to do that uh, so you guys if you want to incorporate the system now I can also make this video um, and show you kind of how that has been laid out so kind of just an overview of the gate products overview of the gate status system not so much a review video um, and I know this went on very, 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 very long, but I hope that you guys were able to get some information off of this. Um, I may come back later with an actual gate status review video since I already have the gate 
uh, Aster and the Gate Titan in two of my other builds, I may be able to get this system and again, try to get it communicated so I can actually use it in game and see how it works. Um, I personally don't think I would utilize this, but if we get enough people interested, maybe we'll be able to incorporate something. But that is what I have for you guys. That's pretty much it. Um, and again, I hope that you were able to get some information from this and hopefully answered some questions that you guys may have of not only gate products, um, but also maybe the gate status specifically. So if you do have any further questions, as I'm sure you guys do, put them down into the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them, but otherwise we're all done here with this. So you guys take care, stay safe, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.